happening across the whole from Bristol to Glastonbury. And it's a really rainy day outside. But anyway, hopefully we'll clear up later for going up to Glastonbury tour. Hi guys, how are you doing? I'm in Glastonbury now. I'm at the Rifleman's Arms pub having a pint before I go up to Glastonbury tour. And uh, the weather has changed drastically. It's much better. This morning when we were traveling here, it was pouring down with rain on our bus journey from Bristol. So um, really happy now. We've got good weather, a nice pint, and then on to Glastonbury tour. Slantia. Beneath the hill, it is said that there is a hidden cave through which you can pass into the fairy realm. There dwells the lord of the Celtic underworld, Gwynabnud, with the cauldron of rebirth. Later tradition has it that there lies the holy grail brought here by Jesus' uncle, Joseph of Arimathea. The cauldron and the grail were both the object of quests for King Arthur and his knights. Glastonbury has a long tradition of being the Isle of Avalon where King Arthur went after his last battle. The monks of Glastonbury Abbey claim to have actually found his grave in 1191. Jesus is said to have come to Glastonbury as a boy, travelling here with Joseph of Amarthea. Joseph was a tin merchant and had travelled to the southwest for this valuable metal. Well guys, I'm up here at the tour. It's absolutely beautiful, really, really windy up here. But uh, the weather's fantastic, the sun is out, you can see for miles around. So I'm here in uh, Chalicewell in Glastonbury. It's a really beautiful, peaceful place. I'm just sitting down here underneath an apple tree in the beautiful summer sun. I'll tell you a small bit about Chalicewell. The Chalicewell is among the best known and best loved holy wells in Britain. The well and surrounding gardens are a living sanctuary, a place to soothe the soul and revive the spirits. Since ancient times, wells have been regarded as sacred places, giving access to the mysterious and divine. Here we honour, as others have done for thousands of years, the well and the healing and the restoration it offers. In the past it was known as the Red Spring, or Blood Spring, because of the red iron deposits the water leaves on everything it touches. Many legends are attributed to its waters, not least among them, is that that they represent the blood of Christ miraculously springing forth from the ground when Joseph of Arimathea buried or washed the cup used at the Last Supper. For others, the waters are acknowledged as the essence of life, and so a continuous spring-like chalice well is seen as a direct expression of unbounded life force. Next I take a look around Glastonbury Town, a real quirky town, smell of incense, crystal shops, healers, all types of things here, very very interesting.
Next, I take a look at Glastonbury's stunning street art. The Glastonbury Muriel Trail was launched in 2019. It has some of the best wall art I've seen anywhere. Next I visit one of England's oldest and most important abbeys, a place of kings and saints, Glastonbury Abbey. Hiya, can I just get one ticket there please? When you first enter Glastonbury Abbey, there is a museum which is really interesting. It lists loads of artefacts that date back 1,500 years of the inception of the abbey. This medieval abbey achieved legendary status as the burial place of King Arthur and Queen Guinevere, following the monks' claim to have found their bones here in 1191. In 1536, during the 27th year of the reign of Henry VIII, there were over 800 monasteries, nunneries and friaries in Britain. By 1541 there were none, and the last abbot of Glastonbury, Richard Whiting, was hung, drawn and quartered on Glastonbury Tor. A brutal end for a pious man. Today it is a tranquil setting in which visitors can discover the stories behind Glastonbury Abbey. One of the finest medieval kitchens in Europe, the 14th century Abbot's Kitchen, is an octagonal building with a fireplace at each corner and was part of the opulent Abbot's House. The Abbey Orchard contains an array of historically significant cider apple varieties. Glastonbury Abbey continues to offer Abbey cider for sale in its shop and cafe and the orchard is still the source of the apples for this popular drink. The Abbey Orchard has been in use since at least 1799 and possibly during the monastic period. After exploring Glastonbury for the day I had a restful night in the Glastonbury Townhouse B&B that I booked on Booking.com. The guest house was clean and quiet, the host was friendly and the breakfast was delicious. I definitely book the Glastonbury townhouse again and I'd recommend it to anyone who's visiting Glastonbury. Well guys, um, it's been a real blast in Glastonbury. I'm just leaving now, I'm on the bus to Bristol. Um, so that's going to be about an hour and a half and then after that I'm heading up to Manchester. So um, we've got a long journey by bus up to Manchester, about three and, three and a half hours I think it is. So guys, in my next two videos I'll be exploring Bristol and Manchester, so please do stay tuned and subscribe to my channel. Also like this video if you liked it, it really does help the channel. And um, till next time, take care. Yes.